Okay, all systems go. Okay, so um, welcome to Gideon Redlinghuis, and let's talk about Python at Cloudflare. Okay, like any good, oh, thanks. Like any good speaker, I'm going to start with the apologies first. So first of all, I might swear, but I'm going to try not to, really hard. The other is this horrible American accent I have. So I'm actually from the Strand. If you don't know where that is, congrats, don't find out. With terms like Osia, Masakaner, that's familiar to me. Um, so I have this horrible American accent because I spent one year in San Francisco and I got back this morning. So I'm still picking up my South African accent back again. Um, so first introductions. So for Americans, they normally pronounce this as G I D O N, ridiculous. They, they they just can't do that last part. Fortunately, I'm not my brother, who's Wouter Redengeis. They just do Wouter Ridiculous. So, um, yeah, I'm Gideon Redengeis. I can actually say that here, and they, people understand it. Yeah. Um, the other part is um, Cloudflare. So, oh, first of all, uh, if you're wondering about the background, uh, I studied at Salenbosch University um, for my honors. I did a paper on P versus NP. For my master's, I did a thesis on uh, formal methods and symbolic execution for the NASA Java Pathfinder project. Then I moved to a small company in Southern Bosch that did telecommunication software for small telecommunication stuff. Then I moved to EC2, Cape Town. And then now I'm at uh, this company, Cloudflare, uh, in San Francisco. So Cloudflare. Who is Cloudflare? Let's find out. So Cloudflare is, roughly speaking, a CDN. So what is a CDN? Uh, it's short for Content Delivery Network. Effectively, it's a proxy. If you have a website uh, in America and you want people in Russia to have a good time, like they want a good response time of that, uh, we can proxy it to Russia for you. So people in Russia see a uh, faster than light uh, experience. So we can break physics for you until the, you know, fake it till you make it. The once the physicists have broken the speed of light, you don't need to see it anymore. We'll be out of business. Um, the other part, we also provide a security. So uh, if you if you don't, if you don't, if you want SSL but you don't want to think about it, we can do it for you. So if you have, if you have a website and you and you don't have SSL yet set up, you might be in trouble because Chrome and Firefox will stop that soon. Um, but for free, you can put yourself on Cloudflare. Boom, you have SSL, and you will always stay up to date with whatever Chrome and Firefox supports. And then our biggest seller is DDoS protection. So we see the biggest attacks in the internet. Uh, we are constantly being uh, mentioned. In, uh, in headlines, or Forbes, and all that stuff. Uh, and we have to deal with those attacks. Um, for instance, this one. The other one off of this, um, so there, uh, there was a, Baidu cust a customer from China called Baidu who uh, simulated a one terab terabit attack against us, and we handled it. And that's the biggest attack ever in history. So also, where are we? We are there across the world. So we have. We call, I'll call them for this talk POPs. So it's point of presence or data centers, DCs. It's many words you can use for them. But that's basically, th this is where we can see traffic. So for instance, if you go to reddit.com here in Johannesburg, you will hit this pop. Um, if you are in China, you, we've got you covered well. And we also grow these things at a roughly one a week. We add one a week. I think we added one while I was in air in the air, so this map isn't up to date. Um, things that are new on this map is we didn't have a Middle Eastern presence last month. We now have four pops. Uh, this was empty about a month ago. That's full. Um, so yeah, so we're growing really fast. Uh, and we have to keep up with the times. So also, if you're wondering who's using this, this uh, some of our customers are Reddit, DigitalOcean, FBI, uh, Donald Trump, and Jeb Bush. So if you keep uh, up to date with your, your American politics and you visit their websites, you'll be going through us. So what, what problems do we face with this, this network of ours? Well, we need to provide the best product and not break the internet. So the problem now in our internet world is it's now a really, really mesh of clouds. If one of the clouds go down, there's a bad experience for everyone. For instance, Dyn DNS went out, the biggest DNS provider in the world, uh, and it looked like Cloudflare went down as well. We didn't. It's just that basically no DNS name resolved. Um, 
There's, of course, many stories of Azure going down, AWS going down this last week, um, affecting a lot of the internet. Uh, we see about 5 to 10% of the internet going through us. So if we break, we break 5 to 10% of the internet. We have a hashtag that we use when we sometimes tweet, save the web. Uh, you might see it float around on Twitter. So how do you get best product, right? So we have to stay ahead of the competition. So there is a lot of competition in the space. It's, uh, the biggest one is called Akamai. Some of you might have heard of them. Um, but yeah, we need to stay ahead of them. So the first problem we have is no product stays the best on its own. Uh, you have to constantly keep evolving. Otherwise, you'll fall behind. So one of the ways of evolving is you need to create something, test it, and deploy it. For creating things, there is many, many business words I can use. Synergy, agile, all that kind of stuff. I won't. Um, but mainly my, my, mainly my talk will focus on the uh, tested and deployed part. Because uh, I personally feel that if you give great tooling when it comes to testing and deploying, the creation part becomes easier. Um, yeah, and then there's a nice little bird coming for you guys. So the tools I'm going to talk about is two tools called Salt and CF Setup. Both of them are written in Python, not these two. I apologize for the confusion. Um, so yeah, does anyone here use Salt? Okay, so I can't just BS my way through this one. Um, so first of all, Salt. Um, what is Salt? And I just lost network. The Wi-Fi just went down. No. I have to save this a PDF for these scenarios. Um, basically, Salt is a configuration manager. What is a configuration manager? To summarize, it is something that you use to decide how a machine should look like when it boots up. So with Salt, you will say that, oh, when this machine boots up, I want to see this software on it at these versions, please. We're running this software. Um, the way we express our configuration, uh, we use YAML and Jinja templates. Uh, also, we have to uh, obviously encrypt a lot of our data, and we use GPG for that. Uh, the other cool feature of Salt is remote command execution. So if you have many, many, many machines and you want to find out, you want to tail a log maybe, you want to grip a log, or you just want to find out uh, how your Asian uh, machines are doing, uh, they have a great query language for that. And you can run any command you want or state. Uh, and uh, Salt claims to scale up to thousands of Salt minions. And normally in a kind of default setup, your, your setup will look like this. So you have one central salt master and many salt minions, normally one per physical machine, and they all communicate via 0MQ, which the previous talker, previous talker covered. So my talk actually covers the problems and how we dealt with them in salt. So what's actually cool about this conference is you are, we are all Python people. And some of these problems aren't properly solved, and it's all, it's all in Python, these problems. So there might be some cool Python libraries that either I or the salt people are not aware that we should be using. We're maybe using something wrong. It'd actually be great to get feedback on, uh, on figuring out uh, how to use salt better. So first of all, salt by default stores. So OK, first of all, what is a job? Um, so when you do a when you remote command execute something on a minion, um, it is called a job. Um, so you say, uh, cat, a, cat a file for me, please, on all the machines. So Salt will keep track of the command you sent and, and the return sent from every minion. And by default, Salt will store that in many, many files and directories on your, your Salt master machine. This does not scale. This does not scale at all. Our, our machines, they just get pegged on a hard drive, just writing out many files. So either you do a file system optimization, or you just move away from doing files to going to Postgres or some other amazing database. They're all amazing, right? Um, so 
that's one of the things we did. So we wrote a patch for salt um, to move away from the uh, file hierarchy system uh, to the more DB side of things. Um, that was pretty cool. I must say Python, the Psycho, GP, Psycho BG uh, is pretty cool library. Uh, I had a good experience with that. Another problem salt has that we had to solve is for some reason they decided that, uh, so they have the, co the school concept that one salt minion can be connected to many salt masters. But the law says that every salt, every salt master will speak on the same port. I don't know why that, they just did that as an oversight. And so the problem is, is in our world, we run stuff in Docker. So we run maybe the same service on the same machine. And maybe that same service can't share the same port. So we had to write extra patches for them so that they can uh, support salt masters on s separate ports, um, which is really weird because Python uh, encourages you to express stuff as addresses, like many sign languages, where you specify the protocol, TCP, the IP address, and the port number. Because when you give me a server, a service address, that's what I expect, not just an IP. It's fairly useless. Um, so they had this weird concept of that. Um, the other thing we want to implement is the support of SRV records in DNS. So DNS actually has its own built-in concept of service discovery uh, that you can use SRV records for. And I couldn't find a good Python library yet to solve that problem for me. So, and I didn't want to write that myself. Um, the other thing is, uh, the, um, the other problem we have for salt masters is, so the, obviously all of this is encrypted, this communication. So uh, they have encryption keys on the salt masters and they have encryption keys on the salt minions. If you're using the same salt, if you're using more than one salt master, the salt master all must use the same key. That becomes a problem for us. We have to manage the keys. We have to make we have to make sure they're secure. It's a mess. So what we want what we want to do implement now in future is the ability to actually have the concept of certificates, and then you have keys that's signed by certificate, and you can authentic by, authenticate by certificate. Again, if someone in the Python world knows how to do that easily, please do it. Please, thank you. Um, is there any questions? I do better in a dialogue than in a monologue. But yeah, if you have any questions, please shout out. So the other problem we have with SALT is developing SALT. So uh, SALT has a concept of states and pillars that you use to specify how your machines look during boot time. That's hard to write, especially when you have legacy machines. So you have a machine running off for five years, uptime five years, and you're like, OK, we want to reboot this sucker. And you're like, mm. Okay, okay. So the first thing we do is we, uh, we take salt, right? And then we try and figure out, so salt, how do we represent this machine in salt? And you take your best shot and your best guess. And then you try and boot, obviously, other machines up beforehand and see if it spins up the same way, and then you may be there. But in the end, there's still the risk. So what some of the ways we're trying to address that is we have the concept of staging salt masters. Um, so you still have a production salt master with all your salt minions connected. Um, but then we also have uh, the secondary salt masters that are running um, uh, ex uh, code that we're not sure yet should be in production. And we, are, we have our minions just talk to them sele selectively. We also have a CI, a, oh, what's it? It's the build server. The build server that runs uh, our high states. So high state is just simply take a, an empty machine and put it into the state that we specified. So we have a, our build server do that constantly and to ensure that our salt stuff still makes sense. A feature we uh, added in-house to salt and is now available in the latest salt, but it has nothing to do with our feature, is uh, Git branches. So you can specify your states and your pillars in Git, but then you can also fork off branches and you can ask salt to please use the branches uh, of your states and pillars, and that makes it very easy to develop states and pillars. And then obviously uh, we can also use Docker containers, and I will elaborate on that further later in this talk. So one of the problems we have as well, another problem, so many problems, why can't we just have that, that silver bullet we were promised, um, is the network. So the one thing you have to notice is our salt master, we have one single salt master, and then we have a salt minion on every physical machine in across the world. So the salt master talks over the normal common man internet to the salt minions. The internet doesn't work. It breaks a lot. 
we we've seen countries just go dark uh, or worse just they just drop some packets um, salt by default uses zero MQ unfortunately zero MQ seems to deal badly with these really really edge cases of weird packet loss especially weird delays weird rerouting and duplication of packets um, so we're still trying to solve that problem this, we contacted salt about this uh, their suggestion is this thing called salt syndic which is basically just a salt master proxy so we put one salt syndic in every physical location and then we keep this communication within the pop where we have a reliable network and we just minimize that amount of communication we have over the internet salt is also looking at new experimental uh, network stacks called RAET and tornado both of them on experimental has the experimental tag attached to it if anyone here knows of a better network stack or knows how to take them out of experimental and into production please I beg you again um, yeah I just don't know what's wrong with normal TCP but anyway um, and then the next problem we have with salt is the command line tool this is a this is an interesting case of where they made a tool that's very good for you that's roughly good for humans humans want to just run one thing and I want somewhat readable human English coming back um, so it, ta it makes a decision for you it has built-in timeouts uh, within itself that you have no control over just so that it, it can seem responsive to a human being that's that's very bad when you try and automate on top of it um, salt can give you JSON output but it loves to uh, put a standard error output in between or even errors in standard output in between it times out the JSON is unparsable uh, yeah it's it's not the great greatest um, so we've actually re rewritten all of this into something we, an internal API we have on our side and we have uh, a tool called deployer for now which does all our deployments using this internal salt IP API and then something we're explain playing with now that I'm super excited about is um, something called salt ba salt bot and hip chat so for those unfamiliar hip chat is a chatting service for your company it's like IRC uh, made by Atlassian the guys from Bitbucket so hip chat and you'll have a channel where you can speak to salt bot salt bot and salt bot will speak to salt for you so in a common channel for everyone you can see what people are doing with salt and what they're getting back and so you can audit yourselves if you're using salt in the appropriate manner so the future salt that we're trying to push for within the salt community is see if we can prove the command line tool that's a huge problem for us um, there is the key management problem so for some reason uh, they do, don't do certificates and then we need to figure out how to make it work across the internet in all corners of the globe because we have our pops everywhere including Johannesburg um, and unfortunately the internet sometimes goes down in Johannesburg as well and I get sad it's like come on guys come on represent South Africa so the second tool TF setup so this is an in-house tool it's not open source unfortunately I cannot show it to you uh, but I can talk about it uh, and hopefully maybe someone will get inspiration from it and write an open source clone of it um, I'd like to see it happen um, so what is CF setup so I think everyone's probably used docker right or like played with it or did the tutorial right oh, how many a few people you, yeah so docker is a word that you know uh, people use to solve everything it's like you have a problem have you docker it yet it's a new t it's a new turn it off turn it on problem yeah. is it in docker yet um, so we started using docker to try and understand how we can create test environments and all that stuff and we figured there's some common patterns we use with docker and we can maybe start wrapping it up in a common tool that everyone can use and this is what CF setup became so the cool feature of CF setup is we try and make it as easy as possible for a developer to spin up a docker container that looks just like production as close as we can get and then you can run his tests in there you can run his code in there and you can see if it behaves well so an interesting question is why did we write this in Python um, so the first thing was looking at CF setup is we weren't actually even sure what we're making like it's just it's a hassle running these docker commands let's just make something that does it for us say hey, maybe some other people might want to see this um, 
So with Python, we were able to develop this really fast. And one of the interesting things of having using an interpreted language is some developer on his computer will have a problem. You're not quite sure what it is, and you can just both jump on at his computer and just start add it, adding to the code, removing to the code, and just trying to understand what is the problem he's specifically seeing. That works great within our company, just trying to develop this tool and figuring out what it's supposed to be. Um, so how does this work? Effectively, it uses a make file. Yeah, we're back in the 70s now. Uh, we have a make file where, um, so you have a project written in some language, and you have a make file that has specific targets that says, this is how you should build something. This is how you test something. This is how you package something. As long as, long as you follow those conventions, um, CF Setup can do those things for you. So now you can say, hey, CF Setup, please build my project within this environment. So the great thing is you don't have to manage dependencies anymore. If you're building on Debian uh, Squeeze, which is almost six years old and runs on really old libraries and you have to link against them, you can do that without, without managing your own machine. Uh, or you want to do uh, Fedora 23 now, uh, CF Setup can spawn up a Fedora 23 box and build against Fedora 23 libraries. It is super powerful, I must say, because we run uh, various different distros at different maturity levels uh, and the ability to just churn out packages that's built for all these kind of environments is, is, is great. So some of these kind of tools that you can use, um, there's something called CF Setup Spawn. So if CF, CF Setup Spawn, you can specify a salt minion type, and then salt will actually high state that Docker container into that state. So this is where salt and Docker really complement each other really well. So you can say, Docker, we have this type called uh, the load balancer machine. Uh, Docker will spin up it with all the appropriate salt configuration as a load balancer. The salt master will contact it and high state it as a load balancer. There's also something called CF Setup Enter. So this weird problem with Docker is it's actually quite hard to enter and exit a, a container. It's, it's the first problem you face when you do Docker. It's like, okay, it's up. How do I exit this without killing it? What do I do? Um, so it's, it was interesting is uh, that's like one of the most useful things. And then uh, CF Setup Build. So when you're within your project and you have your make file there, you just run CF Setup Build, what flavor of the distro you want, enter. And you have Debian packages come out the other, other end built exactly for that environment. Um, and then there's also CF setup test, so we'll run the test actually against that distro environment. So Debian uh, Squeeze might be running an older Python than Debian JC, and you want to make sure that you're compatible with both Python versions. Uh, in my past, I've had to deal with a lot of Ruby uh, incompatibilities, and so this also helps m making sure that you're as compatible as possible across all the environments in your production. So some freebies that this tool gives us, um, it spins up an apt and local DNS container as well. So you actually have your own repo and your environment and you can, you can register your own Debian packages, you can, you can modify the Debian package manager as you would like to see well, how your stuff will react. And then also you can, you can modify the DNS as you want and take complete control of your environment. These freebies are actually called appliances. And so CF Setup has all these concepts of appliances um, the other cool thing as well is when you do a spawn, it doesn't have to be a salt type. It can also be a Docker file now. So, so you can either specify your container as a salt type or as a Docker file. So what is some of the major benefits of this? So we have some interesting projects that have some really cool requirements or just insane requirements. ZeroMQ is one of them. Um, trying to build ZeroMQ I salute you. It's really hard, uh, and it's very different based on the distro you're building it. And it's and even Debian struggles to package it. If you want to install 0MQ4, you might have to install 0MQ3 to get that, depending on the distro. If you want 0MQ4, you have to install 0MQ5 maybe. There's no 0MQ4 package, I think. Um, and so it becomes super confusing. Uh, and so people struggle to package it. And so. And that's all to do with linking of libraries, and, and, and super hard. So when you, um, when you put your stuff in a Docker container, you have better uh, guarantees of isolation, not full isolation, but better guarantees. Do not confuse this with security. This is not a security layer. It's just not trying to corrupt your own file system. We've seen weird projects where they actually try and modify their own code, and it corrupts their own code. Um, yeah, there's some, some evil projects out there in the world. 
another useful feature of this tool is something called stacks. So obviously you don't might, might just want to spin up one container. You, your environment actually consists of a set of containers. For instance, a load balancer, an Nginx container, and a Postgres container. You can specify that as a stack. And CF Setup will spawn that all together and uh, try and manage it for you. So something, a quick side note about Python and Docker. So uh, when this project started, Docker Pi uh, was before version 1.0. And the experience of the developers at that time was it's completely broken. Uh, they found it really, really hard to work with. The other thing as well is this is just a wrapper above the human that was doing the Docker commands. So we actually just fork out to Docker. And you can actually see the exact Docker commands we're using. And you can re reproduce it yourself if you want to debug what CF Setup is doing. That's super useful. Um, I don't know, I'll get to touch on the next slide. Well, yeah, next slide. Is Docker regresses in a really weird ways between versions. Um, especially if you run start running a Docker in production, good luck. <laughs> um, we do. Uh, if you upgrade from 1.7 to 1.8, you will see differences in behavior. You will see spawn, uh, the startups different. You'll see it starts up differently. Uh, for instance, uh, if you are an additional now that uses Firewall D, uh, no, you have you basically have to stop Firewall D. It doesn't work. It doesn't support it anymore. Uh, if someone is running AC Linux, good luck. Uh, that actually started working recently, um, but I think it broke App Armor or something. It was. It's. 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 Docker versions are hard to manage, um, and that's the one thing that we're trying to deal with using CF Setup and see if we can deal with those problems. So the future of this tool and internally into our, com our company is we're just trying to try and add more appliances, try and get it even closer to production. Um, so one of the things we do at CloudSource, we build our own kernels. Uh, Docker doesn't really give us that ability to simulate our own kernels. Um, but we'll try and see what we can get. Um, and then also, every developer runs this natively, CF Setup. And every developer's laptop is on a different distro, a different OS, with different libraries. And it's, it's insane the, the amount of problems you see Docker has. Like, someone's running Firewall D. Why? Why are you trying to be secure? Don't. Uh, someone's running AC Linux. No, no, that, that doesn't work with Docker anymore. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to manage Docker. So the conclusion is uh, with Salt and Docker together, together we, uh, we're able to write and test our code much faster than I think we were ever before. Um, we might be able to keep up with the internet, unlike a certain team was unable to keep up with some other team. Um, because it's very important. It's super important to be able to have, to have confidence in your production environment or your testing environment and in your, your deploying environment that it's safe. Any questions? Uh, great. Could I have a volunteer to run the other mic? So, questions? Um, so, you're talking about automating uh, test and kernel builds or something? Uh, that's that's something we would like to do. Yes. yes. Um, so, there's this uh, Mike, Michael Koshman, Foronix Test uh, Suit or Studio, PTS. Um, okay. It's made the bad guy that runs some Linux like general hardware uh, review site okay. called forenix.com. And um, he seems to do a lot of things where you do custom builds of kernels following Git, doing bisects, tracing, uh, and debugging the things, and has a complete set of open source tools that actually that he's using to do all these things. That's and uh, you can maybe just have a look at that. Yeah, yeah, I d okay. we'll definitely have a look at that. All right, Thanks. Um, that's all. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that's, that's what I was trying to also like share with the Python community. Is like, we need to we need to fix these problems. Uh, just a quick question. So I looked at Docker a while ago, but on all like on a small scale, it seemed to be like more effort than it was worth. Obviously, you guys are making it work. So, do yes. what what level do you see it 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 be like the level at which it actually starts paying for itself? Like, um, <laughs> so. So the Docker stuff is super useful um, when you have a many teams in your company and they're all trying to do their own thing and you can't, and you want to put more trust in their hands. You know, like guys, you're just putting in a Docker container. 
you're fairly confident you won't break anything else as long as in a Docker container. So that's one use we got out of it. Um, but if you're in a tightly coupled team and you don't want to debug the Docker, which is an overhead that we had to pay, it's not worth it. And also it's not worth, some people confuse it with security. And I think if they put something in a Docker container, it's more secure, it's definitely not. Um, okay, hit it. Um, oh, yes, sorry. So I'm curious to know why salt. So why salt? It was chosen before my time. So uh, I wish I wish I had a better answer. So there's so Chef and Puppet, um, and we do look at them every now and again and go, that would be nice. Um, but we stick with salt. We uh, we've now sent many patches to them. We're kind of invested in them into that now. We've contacted them now to find out how we can get salt salt into a better place. Um, but yeah, when we like when I was rewriting the salt command line tool, the obvious question was why? Why am I doing this? Because the, the interesting thing is a lot of the problems you're talking about there have been solved by Chef and Puppet a long time ago. Yeah, so Salt claims they've solved problems that Chef and Puppet has. Um, so every every time you rewrite code, you just produce, introduce new problems. So with this Salt, so, yes. you're pushing all of these updates across the line to yeah. all of these servers all simultaneously. Is that right? Uh, you can. Yeah. Um, so what, that's what the deployer tool now introduces. It does it in a batch mode. So it moves, has a rolling window where it yeah. deploys and tests as it deploys. So, so how do you stop from um, inadvertently destroying all those machines at So once? someone can run pseudo shutdown now on all machines. Yeah. Yes. Um, the problem is I've, I've had many times this problem like, what happens if we have a rogue engineer and he wants to do something bad? It's going to happen. Uh, you you can't stop. You can only stop so much. You can only stop so much rogueness or stupidity. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, it seems like I've seen other big companies where they just delete the single line of a DB and it all goes down. Um, we we believe we hire the best engineers we can, and we give them the training we can. And they should understand what they're doing. Uh, yes, <laughs> if the company is still standing, right? <laughs> um, yeah, but we do take it very serious. The commands we run, we we don't just willy-nilly run whatever we want. Uh, we normally have at least one engineer just look over the shoulder and just confirm whether it's even necessary to run that command. Uh, what if he sneezes? Uh, he doesn't sneeze. Yeah, so obviously you've got salt to put things into an owned state, but how do you get from having a machine that you take out the box to having an operating system installed with a SALT menu? Ah, so, so there's one stop, oh, there's one step that SALT doesn't give us. So if you have a completely blank machine, uh, SALT can't put an image onto, onto it, can't boot an OS for you. So for that, we use something called Perseus, which is just netboot. We just netboot those machines into a, a blank OS. So what did you say the tool was called? Perseus. Uh, I, w I would suggest you look at other tools as well. <laughs> um, it's, it's a legacy tool we still have hanging around. Um, yeah, there might be better options. Um, just a quick one on your salt state development. You mentioned, hey, sorry. Oh, sorry. there you go. Oh, yes. um, you mentioned that you have a staging master that you sometimes point some of your minions at. Yeah. And you've also talked about the really cool Docker infrastructure that you got. Do you guys? Is, is it a separate sort of stack that devs or salt st uh, state devs use, or can they do everything on through the through this little Docker CF setup tool? Um, okay, so you can spin up with CF setup. You can spin up your own little salt environment with salt mass or salt minions. That's completely separate from production. Um, but then, when you want to move something into production and you want to confirm whether it's a, it is a good thing, you can then put it onto our salt big salt staging masters that does touch production. Uh, and because they're a staging salt master, we can roll back very easily if something goes wrong. And have you ever had issues with multiple devs working on similar states, breaking dependent states on yeah. on that thing? Does it? Well, yeah, well. So we have had problems where, um, yeah, it, it, if salt, I it's easy to make bad states. Um, and then normally we have processes in place. Salt has dry runs, so we always run dry runs, and we see what salt's opinion of what's going to happen. Um, Salt sometimes gets it wrong. Uh, I've once high stated something, one of our website boxes, and Salt just decided, meh, I'm just going to wipe all the configuration files. Um, 
And that's something we still, that's another thing we want to bring up with salt is maybe not to do that. <laughs> um, fortunately, you know, in a modern infrastructure, you have something like load balancers. You just take the box out and then you try and fix it. Um, but yeah, there's still, there's still some salt stuff you have to solve. Also, if, if, if you make a bad state, if you write something bad in salt, salt just gives you a, a random stack trace effectively. It's really hard to debug what it's doing. Um, for a price, they will help you a lot. <laughs> But yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, so why uh, CF setup and not uh, Vagrant? Um, so we actually do use Vagrant a little bit, but as far as I know, Vagrant can't give us like the build part. Like you can't ask Vagrant to just quickly build this project for me, as far as I know. Um, where CF setup can do, you can just say CF setup build, and it looks at the make file and it builds the project for you, and also. It has this concept of spinning up an app repo for you and the local DNS repo, stuff we couldn't get in Vagrant at the time. Um, but uh, Vagrant recently released something called Otto, um, and that seems more CF, CF setup like, which we we're quite interested in. Just a question from me. Yeah, sure. Um, what's holding you back from open sourcing CF setup? Uh, it's just uh, this tool was like. It's just the mesh of everything we've done internally. Mm. <laughs> oh, I don't think we'll be that embarrassed. We've seen some bad code as well. Um, no, it's just it's, it just hasn't. It's not the goal at the moment of the team. Uh, they they have too many milestones internally to get the tool to work for more production use cases. Um, yeah, plus the name CF setup. It's not very global. It's Cloudflare setup. So we have to rename it as well, and that's always hard, right? <laughs> getting a good open source name. Anyone else? Okay, well, thanks a lot, Kideon. That cool. was fantastic.